Greetings, this is Jerry Revere with the Avaya Technology Strategy and Development TSND team. This video you are viewing will demonstrate the steps to install the Avaya Diagnostic Server Virtual Appliance OVA into a VMware hypervisor using the vSphere Client and vCenter server. The video you are viewing will demonstrate the steps to install the Avaya Diagnostic Server Virtual Appliance into a VMware hypervisor. The steps demonstrated will be performed using the vSphere client and the vCenter to perform the administration. The OVF wizard will be used to install the Avaya Diagnostic Server 2.0 OVA file. That wizard will perform the provisioning of the network storage, defining of the network interface to be used, and the management of many portions of the install. After the install completes, the secure access link function will be ready to be provisioned and to provide services for the Avaya components directed to it. The SLA MON function can be used to identify network issues with its network monitoring capabilities. I have opened the vSphere client and logged into the vCenter server which allows for administration of all the hypervisors controlled by this vCenter. The first step is to select the hypervisor. The hypervisor I have selected will be where this virtual machine will be installed. It is indicated on the left. The next step is to select the file menu and the choice of Deploy OVF Template. The Deploy OVF Template wizard opens and the first entry is where the other OVA files I have previously installed were located. I am using the Browse button and selecting the ADS 2.0 OVA file on my hard disk. Once a file is selected, press the Next button to advance to the next screen. The details of the OVA file are displayed. Press the Next button to advance. The license agreement is displayed. Press Accept and Next to advance to the naming of the virtual machine. I have given the virtual machine a unique name and press Next to select the storage configuration. We will use the Network Attached Storage. I have selected the NAS unit and press Next which provides a view of the available storage. Pressing Next again advances to the selection of the various network interfaces. ADS 2.0 requires a single interface to be set in this release. The management interfaces will be used to provide all SAL and SLA MON management functions via a web browser pointing at a specific port number for each of these functions. I am setting that interface and pressing Next to go to the IP Properties screen. In the IP Properties screen, there are many pre-populated fields that do not have to be touched. The ones that need to be at least looked at I will address for the next few moments. The first field will be to set the time zone. I have it set for Mountain Standard Time. The next field is the hostname field. A hostname or a fully qualified domain name must be defined. I have entered the VM's host name in this field. The next field asks what components of the Avaya Diagnostic Server are to be installed. I am leaving it set at the default of both so both pieces can be installed. The standalone version of ADS 2.0 provides an embedded web LM server for licensing. However, the virtual appliance does not. The IP address or host name of the target web LM server is required. That is what I'm entering now. The ADS 2.0 provides a new function called Automatic Software Update. The next drop-down allows for installation of that function. The next three fields are mandatory to establish a connection to an SMTP server with the port and administrator email address. This information is used to alert the administrator that new software was installed or is awaiting install. The next three fields are related to the SMTP server setup, but are optional if the SMTP server needs authentication or a second administrator needs to be defined. They can be entered here. The next two fields require information that the pre-registration process should have provided to you from the registration of the system. That is a solution element ID and the alarm ID. If you do not have that information, it can be left at its default and it must be modified from the SAL web interface when the balance of the provisioning is performed. As you can see, I have entered some fictitious values as an example. 
Note the change in color to show that the format is not correct till I get it into the specific mode it's desiring. The next items are defaulted to the Avaya data center servers used for remote access and alarming. The next typical items to be addressed are the proxy host name and the port used by the proxy server. If a proxy server is not used, those entries can be left blank and skipped. Finally, the networking properties will need to be input. Those items consist of the default gateway, your DNS server information, IP addressing, and the subnet mask information. Finally, press Next to advance to the summary screen. This screen summarizes the previous input. Validate the configuration. If all is correct, you would push Finish. You can use the Back button, however, to adjust or make changes. I have pushed the Finish button, which opens a status dialog to indicate the install progress. I have enabled FastMotion Video to show the install status view. I will return after the install completes. The install has completed successfully, and now I am closing the completion dialog. That concludes the actual OVA install. Next we need to start the ADS virtual machine we just created. I will open a console window to watch the machine startup. That is performed by selecting the virtual machine, right clicking on it and selecting open console choice. Pressing the green right facing triangle will power on the virtual machine. I will continue when I have received a login prompt. I have received a login prompt and was able to successfully log into the CLI. This indicates the virtual machine is up and active. Now let's validate the SLA MON and SAL applications are running. Switching over now to a web browser and entering the SLA MON URL identifies that the SLA MON application is available for use. Changing over to the SAL port of 7443 also indicates the Secure Access Link gateway is accessible. After receiving a login screen from both applications, the actual provisioning of the SAL gateway and the SLA monitor can be started. SLA monitor needs to have logins provisioned and that is documented in the customer documentation to the process to do that. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.